So now let's go over ad placement on your site once you do get verified and you're ready to show ads on your site. Obviously the one that we've just put under review is still under review so we're going to use one that has already been accepted. First of all let's quickly go over the dashboard for Google AdSense. On home it's going to give you a quick overview of everything for your ads on the websites. This is also where you're going to connect your Google AdSense for YouTube if you are a content creator and you've monetized your channel. Next up we go to ads. This is going to be what we're going to get to next, which is going to be adding auto ads, manually adding ads, and just generally how to add ads on your website. Then we have sites, which you're going to find the different sites that you've applied for Google AdSense. Just take a note that you can't have multiple accounts, but you can have multiple sites on one account. You can go through the privacy and messaging, about GDPR, ad blocking recovery, brand safety, which is an important one because you can check out the content review, which is the content review center for what sort of ads you are going to allow and what ads you don't want to allow, including blocking controls. And on the ads review center, you can actually review what ads are shown. You can prioritize them, whether it's the most impressions or prioritized for review, and then filter them by review or blocked. Basically, what you can do here is you can go through the list of many, many ads and you can review or block them. For instance, if I want to allow this ad, I can click on this little tick up here and I can go mark as reviewed or I can do this in multiple. So let's say I want this one as well, or this one. So let's go ahead and tick this. I can then mark as reviewed. The same as if I don't want them, I can block them just like this by clicking the block on the bottom left. And you can also report the ad if it does violate any Google policy. You can go through the list. The list is huge and it goes on for almost ever. And then once you're happy with what you've reviewed and what you want to show, you can then go to mark as reviewed. And you can then basically go through all the ads and find the ones that suit you the best. Next up, we have blocking controls, again, under the brand safety and the content section. This is going to be where you can prevent separate ads or different ads from different URLs, different advertisers, ad networks. And it's very vital to do this depending on what your niche is. Let's say if you have got child content, you do not want to be showing anything that is over 18. Or it might be the other way around where you're on over 18 content and you don't want anything too young coming up. You can also allow or disallow different styles of ad serving, such as uh, animated ads, ones using third-party cookies, user-based ads. I wouldn't recommend disallowing any of these because this will obviously make the ads better for the user. Then we do go down to reports. We can check out the reports of how much you've been earning, the impressions, and you can even go down to countries, add units, different platforms, and much more for your great analytic minds. Next up, optimization, where you can find out the opportunities, experiments, or the lab. Opportunities are opportunities that it might suggest to you that might help you get more money. Experiments are ways for you to try different things out on your site without actually running them properly live on your site. And labs will allow you to play with exciting new features that become widely available, or before they come widely available, shall I say. Another very important thing is your payments in your account. You need to, of course, have your verification check and your payment info. There's going to be two ways that you need to verify yourself. That's going to be your identity, and that's going to be either with a driving license or a passport. Next up is going to be the address verification, where they're going to send you a PIN to a physical address, and then you have to let them know what the PIN is. This will be anywhere between uh, one to four weeks. Once you've got the letter, you simply type it in here, and they also confirm your address. And last but not least, of course, you're going to have to do the payment methods, which is adding your payment method so you do get paid. So with that, let's actually go down to the ads for the sites. Do this, go over to ads, and then we're going to go to the little pencil mark there. As you can see, auto ads is off. So we're going to go ahead to the little pencil over here, and we're going to go to edit. On the left-hand side, we're going to get a preview of our site. This can take a little while to load, so don't worry too much about this. On the right-hand side, we have the sections that we're going to need here. So auto ads is very simple. To click auto ads on, we're simply going to enable this, and then it's going to give us all the further options underneath. First of all, it's going to include optimizing your existing ad units. Um, Google does optimize quite well, so I would suggest leaving this on, unless it does give you any sort of problems. Now, if we go down, we're going to go to add formats, and this is going to be the ad format that you allow or disallow. It's going to be in page ads. These are going to be ads that suit your content and will appear within the page and within the content. Multiplex ads is when you have a variety of ads in a block, such as this here where you see we have about eight ads in one particular block. Anchor ads come along the bottom of your screen, so that's going to be as you're scrolling potentially. You might have an ad pop up, which you can then make go back down. Widescreen ads, rail ads, this, these are the ads that stick on the, one of the sides of the screen as well. And that's going to be as it scrolled, so it goes down with a user. And there we go, here's a perfect example of an anchor ad on the top. Vinaigrette ads are the ones that appear between screen loads. So let's say, for instance, I click find out more. It's going to take me to an ad in between, which we can then click off of if we're not interested. And then it will take us to the next page. Now let's go down to add load. This is going to be where you can choose how much you actually want loaded on. Perhaps it might be that they're serving too many ads on your website and you want to take it down a little notch. This will also preview on the left hand side. As you can see, it says we have four in-page ads 
And if we move this up to max, we're going to get about six, seven, eight in page ads if we move it up there. So stick to a point you feel happy with. Now let's go check out the exclude pages section. This is important if you want to completely exclude pages. You don't want any ads showing this on the auto ads. This is very simple. All you need to do is get the URL of the particular um, page that you don't want any ads to be served on. Make sure that you serve this to the page only, unless you want it to do for all the pages under this particular section. And that's going to be anything that shares the same URL prefix. Once you're happy, go ahead and add. And by doing that, you can basically perfect the way that you want it to automatically show ads on your website. So now let's go check out how you can do it manually. I'm going to switch the auto ads off. However, you can have also a variety of auto ads running with manual ads as well. However, I'm going to switch auto ads off. Now to add them manually, we're going to go to add by unit. And we're going to find out a little bit more about how to add them in manually with the code. And here we're going to go through the different display types. First of all is your display ads. This is a good all around and will work on many different areas. In feed ads, this is great for matching the look of your website and to fit in between posts and listings. Native, which is great to use actually in the post itself between the writing. And multiplex ads, which will show you a variety of ads in one block. As you can see here, I've got a list that I've already made. And the way to do this is by actually clicking on the type that you want. Let's start first with display ads. As you can see, it's going to give you a little display of the ad itself. You can try it square, horizontal, or vertical as well. As you can see, the other options are responsive. So this will actually move to the screen size. So if it's a mobile, a desktop, a laptop, it will change accordingly. If you do want it fixed, you can also select fix and put the definite width and height. This of course might cause you problems if somebody's viewing this on a mobile. However, you can fix this by making it responsive with a Lamentor to not show on a mobile. However, for ease of use, we're gonna go for responsive so it will fit on any screen. Now, the way that I recommend doing this is choosing each different type. So for instance, I've got here a square responsive ad type. So I'd recommend typing that name in to save for the actual type of ad because you might want to use this multiple times. So for instance, if you wanna use a square ad, you will continuously use the code that it gives you here. Same as horizontal, same as vertical. Once you're done, click create. As you can see here, I've got a square responsive ad, which I've saved right here, and that's not gonna change. I can use this as many times as I want. The same as I've also created a responsive horizontal and a responsive vertical, depending on where I want to put the ad. We're gonna skip in feed ad. It's a little bit more complicated, not too much more complicated. If we go on to here, it's simply gonna ask you for the URL, and whether it's for mobile or desktop, you're gonna then scan the page and add it. This is the recommended style from Google. You can also create the ad style manually by choosing the type of ad that you want. And much like the same way, we're going to follow how we done the last one. So we're going to add an ad name unit. So can we remember, this is a reference for ourselves, what type of font, background colors, padding, border size. And you can also resize the width by dragging this like that. Next up, we have the in article ads. Again, a very easy, uh, much like the last one, we're going to add to the ad name unit. You can see what the ad's going to look like. And as you can see, this works really well within written content. Again, you can drag the cursor over here. Some blogs might be really small some blogs might be full width so change accordingly same as you can change the style title description background once you're finished save and get the code once you do save they will all be saved on your list here now down to the last one which is the multiplex ads now i quite like this one because it actually shows a variety of ads in one area much like before we can name the unit i would recommend naming this something for your reference so you remember what it is so for instance if we're going to do horizontal and we're going to do responsive i'm going to put responsive horizontal multiplex design. Choose your font, text, color, background, and then create once you're done. So now that you've got the ads that you've actually created, the ones that you want to use, you can find them all down in your list. And as you can see, I've also marked these. So whether I want to put a multiplex ad, which is responsive and horizontal, a square responsive ad for display ads, or anything else. Now to actually get the code for these, which is gonna be what we're gonna do next, is you're gonna come over this little symbol over here, which is get code. If you wanna edit it, of course, come to the edit button. You can also see the reports of this or select more to archive. So next, let's go to your website and find out where we want to put it. As you can see on my homepage, I've actually kept mine within certain borders. And this is the benefit of putting your ads places that you want them to go. They will fit nicely and look much better. So for this, I'm gonna choose a blog that I've got up already and I'm gonna choose where to put it. This will work the same for pages and for blogs and it's very simple. As previously mentioned, the ads that we've chosen, we can then get the code for. So I'm gonna to want to put a responsive horizontal ad onto some of the blog posts. I'm gonna click get code and I'm gonna copy the snippet and then return back to the place that you want to add the ad. Now, this is extremely simple. You're gonna choose exactly where you want to put it. I'm gonna show you an Elementor as well. So let's say if I want my ad right there, we're gonna to go to add block. We're gonna to go to custom HTML and we are simply going to paste the code into there. Click preview and you should be able to get a preview. Sometimes it doesn't preview well or it has these little bars, but usually when it's live, it looks much better. Now, let's say we wanted to use our two square ads. We can put two square ads next to each other by choosing columns. Choose two different columns like that. We're gonna go for custom HTML again. This time I'm gonna look for my square responsive ad because I know that it's a square shape. So again, we're gonna click get code. We're gonna to go to copy code snippet. 
We're going to paste the code into this section over here and then click preview. Perfect. So that's one of the ads loaded there. We can also go ahead and do the same thing over here. And now we have two separate ads next to each other that are square. Now let's take a look at the multiplex ads. I've added one on here so we can check out the multiplex ads. Again, I do think this worked quite well because they have a different or varied amount of ads on there. So a bigger selection for whoever's visiting. Again, let's go to get code, copy over the code, and again, plus a little plus sign, go to custom HTML, insert the custom HTML, and then click preview. There we go, multiplex ads all up in exactly where we want them. Now I'm going to go ahead and update this and let's go check out a different page using Elementor. One of the best things about adding ads by ad unit is the fact that you can put it wherever you want and you can be very specific. For instance, I want my ad to fit within a picture so the picture is always covering it. You can do this easily by creating a section, going over to style and adding a background to that section. And again, we're going to grab our HTML block and we're going to add it within this section. To make this definitely fit within the background, I'm also going to add a spacer on the top and the bottom. So no matter how big the ad is, there will be space on the top and bottom to see the background picture. Next up, we're going to choose the type of ad that we want to show. I'm going to show a responsive horizontal ad. So we're going to go get the code, come back over to your page and then paste the code in. Now let's just go ahead and update. Obviously at the moment it's just going to show as yellow, but that is where the ad is going to show. Sometimes it will show it in preview, sometimes it won't. Making sure that your ad displays well and exactly where you want it to. 